So nobody wants to play solos that suck. And what does that mean when we say that to ourselves? I mean, when we sit down to practice, it's just a way of saying, not satisfied with my playing yet. And if we were happy with the way we played, we'd just sit down and play. We wouldn't sit down and work on it. So soloing in particular is tricky because soloing is something that you make up. So how can you practice making stuff up? That's what we're going to talk about in this lesson. So there are really just three things you need to improve your soloing. And this is my list of three things. Someone else is going to have a different list of three things. But these are the three things that I think can really make a difference. And the reason to say it's the three things that will help you play solos that don't suck is that really trying not to suck is really all we're saying to ourselves when we sit down and practice. We're like, I'm practicing because if I was perfectly happy with my playing, I wouldn't think I needed to practice. But so if I'm practicing, it must be because there's something I want to improve. And the fact is that soloing is just one of the most mysterious and nebulous things about playing the guitar because you're making it up as you go or that's what you're supposed to do anyway or that's what we think we're supposed to do but in fact soloing is something that you have to practice just like anything else and that sounds so totally counterintuitive right like you practice scales and you practice chords you practice time with a metronome, you practice songs, you practice turnarounds, whatever it is. But somehow when it comes to soloing, we all think, oh, it's just gonna have to fall out of my guitar like magic. And it doesn't. And soloing is something that people who play great solos actually work on. And what I'm talking about here applies to both fingerstyle guitar and single note soloing in a more ensemble setting. But I focus a lot on the fingerstyle aspect of things here because with fingerstyle guitars, there's the added complexity that anything you're going to do with your fingers, you have to coordinate with your thumb. And that adds like a whole other layer to the whole process. So the three things are one, having a model for your solos, having a vocabulary of licks that you can apply to that model, and then having a practice routine, a way to work on practicing improvising. So having a model is something I've actually talked about elsewhere here on my channel in a lesson called Three Steps to Improvising on an 8-Bar Blues. And I talk about, in that lesson, and I'll put a link down below, I talk about how to take, uh, in the case of this one lesson, the 8-Bar Blues, Trouble in Mind, and use the melody as a model for the phrasing of the solo, right? Because why not start with something that sounds musical and that has space and that has some that's kind of coherent sounding right so if you just strip everything down to the bones and you just work on even just playing eight bars over you know an e vamp you can still create um, some structure right so the idea of a model for your soloing is like you know something as simple as an a b a c structure like well i'm going to play a lick um like uh, And then I'm going to leave a measure of space. And then I'm going to answer it. And I'll have some more space. Then I'm going to play the first lick again. Only this time I'm going to continue it. For another measure. And then I'll have two bars of space. Now if I do all that together, I get this little eight bar statement. Here's my first lick. A. And then here's the answer. Let's call that B. Now I'm going to play the first lick again. I'll call that A. And then I'm going to continue on with a third lick. Call that C. So I've got this A, B, A, C structure. That's my model. And so it can be as simple as that. And just having um, a model or an example of what the shape of the solo could be, which you can then drop licks into. So that leads us to the second thing, which is having a vocabulary of licks. And 
wouldn't you know, I did a lesson on this also called How to Turn Scales into Pentatonic Licks, and I'll put a link to that below as well. And this is the idea that if you think first in terms of the rhythmic shape of what you're doing, what is the rhythmic shape of that? One and two and three and four and. And if you start with that shape, then instead of starting from like, well, I know this scale, and I'm gonna play the scale, you think I have this rhythmic idea, I'm going to choose notes from the scale to fill out that rhythmic idea. That's one way you could do it, but another way might be like that, because that's the exact same rhythm. One, one, and two, and three, and, right? Or, Right, so the idea that if you have um, some solid rhythmic ideas, some solid rhythmic control over what you're doing, uh, you can create any number of licks that satisfy that rhythm using the scale as the notes to sort of populate that rhythm. So you need a vocabulary of licks to drop into that model. So if we're saying that our model is to have a series of one measure licks, play a lick in the first measure, play a lick in the third measure, play the first lick again in the fifth measure, and then answer it. Measure two, measure three, measure four, measure five, measure six, measure seven, measure eight. Right, now I'm not playing all the time, I'm leaving some space, but it's got this nice structure to it. A, B, A, C, first lick, second lick for contrast, back to the first lick, and then continue that first lick on. So you need licks to put into that model. So first have a model, and second have a vocabulary of licks. And then the third thing is to have a practice routine. Now this is where it gets very counterintuitive, because how can you practice improvising or making stuff up? And the answer is to kind of put together the first two things, to say, well, I'm gonna use this model um, this A, B, A, C model in this case, but there are obviously countless ways you could model your solo. And then this vocabulary of licks, which of course I'm taking one specific rhythm and I'm using one specific scale, so that's got a lot of variables. But you can take that model and you can, once you've worked out a version with one set of licks, if you have four different licks that satisfy that opening rhythm, you can then take your model and go, okay, well, I'm gonna play through my eight bar model solo four times. And the first time I'm gonna use the original lick. The second time I'm gonna use a different lick with the same rhythm. And then the third time I'm gonna use a different lick again with the same rhythm. Right, and so you can go through that model swapping out just the first lick and leaving everything else the same. Then you can go through the model again and swap out the second lick, and so on. Then swap out the third or the fourth lick. But the idea is that you practice dropping licks into this model so that, one, you learn the licks cold, and two, you learn to hear what they sound like in different places, and three, you get used to dropping in licks on the fly, but within a certain kind of structure. So. No, that's not completely winging it, and it's not completely free and open, but it is a stepping stone, a bridge between playing things that you only know because you can play them in the order you learned them from a piece of tab, and that place you wanna to get to where you can just sit down and play. The middle ground is where you have a model, and you drop licks into that model, and you practice becoming fluent at moving around a different finite, a, a, you know, different pieces of a finite amount of information that you have in your head. And then as you slowly expand that model, you can come up with different routines to go through the chord progression uh, or different models. You can come up with different licks that have similar rhythmic outlines, and you can practice doing more and more of that mixing and matching along the way. So those are my three steps for how to start soloing or how to improve the soloing that you're already doing. Start with a model develop a vocabulary of licks, and use a practice routine that's based on swapping those licks into that model on the fly. 
Now, wouldn't you know, this is exactly what we're covering this month in my membership, the Fingerstyle 5. And so if you want to learn more about this idea or work on it in more detail, in a more regular, ongoing way, I encourage you to go check out the Fingerstyle 5 over at fretboardconfidential.com. If you've got questions or comments about today's lesson, I would love to hear from you. You can leave them in the comment section down below. And as ever, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.